Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, and in this After Effects video, we're gonna talk about four techniques to create cinematic titles. So I don't like using the word cinematic because everyone has their own definition of it, but it's a great clickbait keyword, and the four cinematic techniques that we'll look at in this video for these titles is the title design, using flares, particles, and atmospheric design. All these are kind of cliche when it comes to creating, say, trailer titles, but who cares, they work, and that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. So let's go ahead and jump into the first part, which is the title design, which is probably the most important part, because if you have wimpy titles, you're not gonna really pull this off correctly. Now, there's a number of ways to create great titles. It's really up to you, uh, but we'll be focusing on this style in this video. Uh, you can go nice and big, large, bold, 3D. You know, you can do some crazy design to it, but I like titles that fit with the overall composition. All right, here we are in our main composition. All we have in here is a title, and the typeface choice doesn't really matter so much. I'm using Gotham with an extra light font to it. A really great typeface, and it's very important instead of doing a pure white title like you normally would do probably on a black background, you need to make this a medium gray because, because we're going to animate some light reflection. So when you have your title in here, what we're going to do is go up to Layer Precompose, and we can call it, and we'll call it Title Holder. Click OK. And then we'll go up to Layer New Solid. And we're going to call it Flare. Go up to Effect Generate. And we're going to grab the Lens Flare effect. Now, this is a very basic lens flare. Don't freak out over it, but it's going to work for what we're doing here. So what we're going to do is offset the flare to the left side here. Make sure you're at the beginning of the timeline. Add a keyframe for Flare Center. We'll move forward to, say, 5 seconds, which will be our animation and we'll grab the flare center, move it over to the other side. So this is what we'll have, just like that. And from here, what we'll do is we'll go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and we're gonna add Gaussian Blur. We'll blur this up by a little bit. Repeat, Edge Pixels. Go to Effect, Color Correction, Tint. And that's fine, and that's totally fine. And from here, we'll do Toggle Switches and Modes until we see the track mat. And for the title holder, set the track mat to Luma Matte. And now you can see we have a reflection here with our title and that looks pretty cool. And if this isn't enough for you, you can grab your flare and title holder, go up to edit, duplicate, and you can grab the flare layer, go up to layer, transform, and you click on flip horizontal. And now create a nice light reflection for about five seconds. And boom, there is your reflection. Now, what I do from here is grab our layers here and pre-compose them again, go layer, pre-compose and we can call it title design and then we'll go up to effect stylize glow and that looks pretty cool but what i like to do here is go to the color looping and set this to solid tube b greater than a and then go to glow colors and set it to a and b colors and that's going to put emphasis on a small portion of it and then i want to duplicate the glow effect uh, reset it and we can come here and bring up the glow uh, threshold by a touch and then increase the intensity to about five or so and this will give us a unique uh, glow on our title and I think that looks cool then I like to go to effect perspective drop shadow and you really can't see it now until we get a background in here but set the distance down to zero and we can increase the softness and increase the opacity by a touch and then we'll duplicate the drop shadow and we'll really increase the softness of the drop shadow and that should be fine for now we can maybe lower the opacity of it to about 30 20 to 30 percent and boom there's our title and then we'll go to layer layer styles and we're going to grab the bevel and emboss and this is where it's going to become a little bit 3d we're going to cheat 3d here a little bit but open up the bevel and emboss down here where it says style set it from inner bevel to outer bevel i'm going to change the highlight color to a medium gray and that should be fine so I think we're complete here for our title. If you want to animate it, we'll do that in a second. But let's go ahead and build up the rest of our scene. If you don't have a lot of time or patience to create these cinematic titles, be sure to check our links in the video description. It'll take you to a video high which has thousands of amazing title templates specifically for these cinematic titles that you're looking to create. You can purchase these. These are pre-made and ready to go. And also, if you're not interested in purchasing anything, it's also great to looking at some of these links 
to get some ideas for your own cinematic titles because I'm only gonna teach one style here, but there's plenty of other ways to create cinematic titles. So either you're on that time crunch or you need some new ideas, go ahead and check that link in the video description and you can preview thousands of amazing After Effects templates. The next thing I wanna take a look at is the atmosphere and the texture of the entire composition. And this goes with the environment. It's like, okay, do you want a dark texture background? Do you want some smoke in there? Some volumetric effects? And we'll be using volumetric light in this video, which is a free download pack from rocketstock.com. I'll link it in the video description. You can download 16 4K volumetric light assets that we'll be using in this video, uh, which is really cool. But there's a bunch of assets that we'll take a look at in the tutorial. And I have this free pack volumetric light and dust and you can check out our links in the video description if you want to download it. It comes with 14 light and dust elements that are awesome to use and they help you enhance your motion graphics really quick. But we're going to come here, we're going to grab O3 large dust and we're going to bring it underneath our title here. And there is our dust element. And now I like to add a texture and I'll go ahead and bring that underneath our light and dust. We can't see it. So what we'll do with our light and dust, go to the blend mode and set it to overlay. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring down the opacity of our background, go to effect color correction and tint it out. And then I'm probably even gonna darken it up by a touch. And then I'm gonna go to our light beam here and we can change the color of this by going to color correction curves. And we can mess with the curves here, you know, manipulate the red channel, go to the green channel and we can bring this down and make it a little bit more blue if you will. And you see we have some very small dust elements in there. That looks good. And then I also have this lens dust texture, which you can Google a lens dust texture. And basically it's just this, you know, bokeh looking image in here. And I'm gonna bring some top of everything and set the blend mode to screen. And that looks pretty cool. And then lastly, I have these fog elements from Premium Beat and you can download these for free, absolutely free. And this could help us add a little bit more, you know, atmosphere to our entire, you know, composition here. There's over, I think 20 in here, 21 to be precise. And these are really cool. So maybe we'll go ahead and bring this one in here. It might be a little bit overkill, but we'll bring it underneath our light dust and we'll set it to screen. But now we're really starting to build out a very, you know, small scene in here. So with that out of the way, we have two other cliche elements that we can look at, which is particles and flares. Now with particles, uh, you typically want to use that to enhance maybe the tidal impact, or you might just want to have some particles kind of go in there with the atmosphere. You can kind of work that with both ways. It's really up to you. When it comes to particles, I prefer the particles to make sense. So it blends them in with say the atmosphere of your scene. Uh, if you work with particles, just the title, then you might want to have that related to the story somehow, uh, other, th other than it just being completely cliche. Uh, it is really awesome. I have nothing wrong with it being cliche, but it's really up to you. It's just something to think about when you're doing particles. Now we can take a look at particles here. And this is from Video Copilot. This is a free pack of particles. And simply this will help us enhance our scene and add more movement to it. And we'll go ahead and bring in Particles 04, bring it on top of underneath the title design. And we'll set this to a screen as well. And then we need to curve this down. So we'll grab color correction curves. And this will add just a little bit more you know, detail into this overall image. And we can also change the channel of it so we can make it a little bit more blue if you want. So at this point we have particles, our light and dust and all of our textures in here that make this scene really stand out, but we still have to animate it. And I wanna add lens flares next to really get this, you know, going and then we can do the animation. So, so last up on our list is lens flares. In my case on camera here is, you know, more like lens fogging, but uh, of course lens flares is something that you see all the time, especially when you see like maybe, say a movie trailer or if you go on Video Hive, you see a lot of lens flares on there. And there's a number of ways to create lens flares. There's really not a great way in After Effects using the built-in tools. You have the basic lens flare effect in After Effects. I don't suggest using it. Uh, however, there are some very cost-effective uh, methods to get lens flares. So you can buy a lens flare pack, which are pre-made lens flares. I'll link a few in the video description. Uh, and also you can use uh, Video Code Pilot's optical flares, which I absolutely love using. Um, so it's really up to you. I'm not gonna really go in depth on how to create a lens flare because there's multiple ways to do it. And if you have a lens flare pack or optical flares, you should know how to use that already. But using lens flares strategically either to reveal something on or just the beginning impact of having like the glow of a flare reveal on your scene is very important or at least it creates a bigger impact and more emphasis on the title. So think of it that way. You use flares to create emphasis on the title. All right, so we have a couple of flares in here. This flare in the middle is called an accent streak, and it's very easy to create if you have optical flares or 
uh, pretty much any lens flare pack should have something similar to this. And this draws attention to the title. And then we have our transition flare. It gives us pure white at the beginning and then really gets into the scene. Uh, so it's a good transition to bring you into the scene and it's really good. So we need to go ahead and animate this you know, scene and, me and maybe even composite it a little bit more. So let's go ahead and animate it right off the start. So let's go to layer, new adjustment layer. And we'll go to effect distort. And I'm going to grab optics compensation. And we're going to check on reverse lens distortion. And we're going to come here to maybe about 18 frames. We'll add a keyframe for field of view. Move to the beginning. We'll really, ha we'll really have to increase this to maybe 150 or so. And this will draw us into the scene. And we'll make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard. Uh, I want to grab some of these elements in here like the lens dust. What I like, and I would like to do is add a wiggle expression to the lens dust layer. Then I would like to animate with the accent street and our title and have it, you know, maybe move scale backwards into the scene or it can scale forward, but I'm going to move it backwards just by a touch, not by much. I'll also animate the background to scale towards us as well. And we can create parallax by scaling in objects and scaling objects out. And that helps add a little bit of movement to this. And then if we want to animate our title, we can go back into our original title layer. We can open up this layer, go to animate. And we say we can do like a tracking animation here. And we can open this up. We can also say add a blur to this. And we can increase the blur of this. And we'll move forward here to the beginning. Go to like, you know, add a keyframe for start. And we'll move forward here by a few keyframes or a few frames and set it to 100%. So this is simply what we have just like this. And that will be reflected in our main composition. And of course, make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And I like to tie all this together by creating a new adjustment layer and go to effect color correction and curves. And we can create a little bit of contrast in the scene. Create a little S curve and that will make things a little bit darker. Be very careful when you do this because you can probably overdo it. And we can add a touch of color to this. So I think that looks amazing. And, and a little bit of color correction can really go a long way to making the scene pop even more. So I will keep that in mind. And of course, when you're done, turn on motion blur for all your layers. Go back into even your main composition here or your main title layer. And be sure to turn it on at the top and you should be ready to go. So those are the four things to keep in mind when creating cinematic titles. And that was actually eight. So there's four. Uh, so keep in mind, you know, you got to work with the flares, the particles, the title design and the atmosphere design. All that comes together. You don't have to use every element there, uh, but that's a good starter pack. I would call this the four tip starter pack for cinematic titles. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if you guys did, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two to three After Effects videos a week. And hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always be creating.